Welcome to the vlog. Yesterday I watched this documentary and I, I, I started it before, but yesterday really hit the spot. It was really beautiful to see, called Needle Through Brick. I love that name, by the way. And it's the name of this uh, documentary. You can watch it for free if you have Amazon Prime. And so I had finished the Kung Fu Quest, which I liked a lot, you know, a lot. Uh, but this documentary, Needle Through Brick, focuses on a few Kung Fu masters that left China, some of them because of the Japanese, some of them because of the Cultural Revolution, the Communist uh, Party, and they find themselves in uh, Malaysia, in Borneo. And they found themselves really struggling to make a living, not being able to, you know, like they have this art that they learn from the teachers some of them had mantis, some of them had this system called needle through brick, amazing. Uh, tai Chi, etc. And they find themselves with this Kung Fu. And you know, what do you do with it? You need money. People want to learn it for free. So you see some of them are taxi drivers. Some of them are all men that try to make a living somehow. But in the meantime, this art they learned is going to die and I don't know in the past that would have struck a chord with me it probably wouldn't but now it does like I, it, you, when, there's a point when you learn something so beautiful changes your life so much that automatically without you having tried you want to preserve it you want to be part of the part of the preservation of that art because it's so beautiful and it's meant so much for you not that you set out to do that at all. So they talk about, some of them talk like they don't have students, some of them have students, but they're not, they just went away, or they're not teaching, or, it's just a dilemma. I was asking my mom this morning, you know, like in Spain, I grew up in Spain, and we had this flamenco. People who are into flamenco, which is not a lot of people really, in Spain, it's, it don't, that's a myth, right? But certain, certain people uh, have these palos, and the palos are the various systems of flamenco that you learn. And they're very, very difficult rhythmically and all of that, but they're very different. Um, so imagine one of those palos, like say, you know, soleas, would be lost. Because some master of it, someone who had, didn't find someone to pass it on who could pass it on. You know, or if you think about art, um, painting for example one school of painting that died off and this happens certainly has happened with kung fu probably thousands of times already but it's still something sad this this because it means so much you know like to me it strikes a chord you know like oh my god to let this art die and one of them was saying in this documentary that his teacher had asked him to preserve it, to prevent this art from dying and specifically other teachers don't say that right but and so he was desperate. You, you need to make a living, and then you need to somehow teach a few people for free if you want to teach, or they're willing to pay, but not in this situation in Borneo. I mean, they, they didn't land in a culture where people were willing to pay much for this. And other sports, you can see, were more popular, like uh, wushu was very, very popular. Children can compete. Competition creates recognition. And, but of course, that ends early in life, and then what do you do? So they were trying to create an idea of transition from wushu to... Um, traditional martial arts but anyway it's a beautiful thing and I just want to talk about this concept of the preservation of the art not something I would have imagined feeling but something that comes out of the natural you know impact in your life and say well, well, this thing that came to me and changed my life what a shame to let it die right now some systems are at no risk of dying right now uh, but other systems are for sure well have a good week be safe